Hi Year 12, today what we're looking at is um, the chapter binomial distributions which is an extension one topic and we're looking at sample proportions. So a population proportion P is the number of people or objects in the population that have a certain characteristics as a function of the total population. For example, if 2,745 seagulls in a population of 9,232 living on the central coast have red eyes, oops, I should have fixed this, red eyes, then the population proportion is given by the number of seagulls that have red eyes, which is 2,741, over the total number of seagulls living on the central coast, which is 9,232. When the population is large, we usually take a large sample from the population and assume that the sample proportion is a good estimate of the population proportion. So sample proportions is p hat equals x over n, where x is the value of a binomial random variable x with a probability of success p and a sample size n. The value of pxn is different for each sample randomly selected from the population. These sample proportions form a discrete probability distribution called the sampling distribution of proportions. Let's look at the first example. We have a company produces batteries and does annual checks to see what proportion of them are defective. In the last three years, the number of defective batteries was as follows. Year 1, 31 defective batteries at a out of a sample of 1,500. Year 2, 19 defective batteries out of a sample of 1,100. And year 3, 45 defective out of a sample of 2,000. For part A, we want to find the sample proportion for each of the years as a percentage to one decimal place. So what we're going to do is we need to use that um, sample proportion formula of P hat equals X over N. We are then going to use this to find the percentage for year one, year two, and year three. So year one is P hat equals our X value is our um, X value is the um, number that it affected, which in this case is 31. So 31 out of our um, sample, and our sample is 1,500. So this is over 1,500. And when we put this into our calculator, we get 0 0.021. And however, we want this as a percentage. Right now, it is just a decimal. So we have to um, multiply this by 100 to get a percentage. So when we multiply this by 100, we get 2.1%. Now let's look at year two. So we have that P hat equals our X value, which is our 19 over our N value, which is our sample of 1,100. So what we do then is put that in our calculator and we get 0 0.0173. We then want to multiply this decimal by 100 to get it to a percentage like the question asked. And when we do that, we get 1.7% to one decimal place. And then year three, we have that P hat equals our X value of 45 over our n value, which is our total number in the sample of 2000. When we put 45 over 2000 into our calculator, we get 0 0.0225. We then need to multiply this decimal by 100 to get a percentage of 2.25%. However, we want this correct to one decimal place, so it will be 2.3%. We now want to use these results to state an average percentage of defective batteries for this company. So we need to think back to what an average means, and an average is the mean. So we want to calculate the average by adding the percentages together. So 2.1% plus 1.7% plus 2.3%, and then we want to divide by the number of years. So we're going to divide by 3 and when we do this, we get 
2.03%. Um, so this means that the company has around 2%, we can just round to the nearest um, percentage, defective batteries. So we have found the average. Okay, moving on. So the sample size and normal distribution, um, we can use the binomial distribution to explore the sampling distribution of proportions p hat using different values of p and n. Since the calculations become more difficult with larger sample sizes, we can use technology to help draw graphs of sample distributions. As samples become larger, we can notice that the sampling distributions become closer to a normal distribution. This is called the central limit theorem. So for the central limit theorem, when we have large sample sizes, the sampling distribution of p hat is extremely normal. This means that we can use the normal distribution for discrete data with a large sample size as well as for continuous data. To find the mean using the central limit theorem, we use E of p hat equals p. We use the variance of p hat equals p bracket 1 minus p to the power over, sorry, over n. So what we want to do here is we want to find the mean variance and standard deviation of the sampling population with p hat, uh, p equals 0 0.4, sorry, and n equals 50. So what we have to do here is we have to find um, the mean or the expected value, sorry, and then we find the variance and then we square root the variance to find the standard deviation. So ex is equal to the mean, which equals p, which in this case equals 0 0.4. Our variance of our x equals p bracket 1 minus p all over our n. So when we sub our values in, we have 0 0.4 bracket 1 minus 0 0.4 all over our n of 50 which equals 0 0.4 times 0 0.6 all over 50. And when we put that into our calculator, we get 0 0.0048. We then want to find the standard deviation. So standard deviation is the symbol sigma which equals the square root of the variance. So that equals the square root of 0 0.0048 and the square root of 0 0.0048 is 0 0.0693. Let me just double check that. Yes, um, and that is to three, uh, sorry, four decimal places. So that's an answer to 4DP and that's an answer to 4DP. Okay, so then for part B, we want to find the mean variance and standard deviation of the sampling distribution with P equals 0 0.9 and N equals 125. So we do the exact same process. So EX is our mean, which equals our P value which in this case equals 0 0.9. Our variance of x is the formula p bracket 1 minus p all over n, which equals our p of 0 0.9 bracket 1 minus 0 0.9 all over our n of 125, which equals 0 0.9 times 0 0.1 all over 125. And when we put this into our calculator, we get 0 0.00. 072. Then to find the standard deviation, it is the symbol um, sigma, which equals the square root of the variance x, which equals the square root of 0 0.00072, which equals 0 0.0. 268. Okay, example two, 
we have the incidence of asthma in a particular population is 21%. A sample of 89 people was taken from this population. How many people in this sample would you expect to have asthma? So we would ex expect 21% of the sample to have asthma and our sample size is 89. So 21% of 89 people. And how we work that out is we go 0.21 times 89 so we change our percentage to either fraction or a decimal and when we do this we get 18.69 so we would expect um, 19 people to have asthma Now we want to find the sample proportion p hat as a fraction. So we use that same formula from before where p hat equals x over n. And so what we have is that we found our x to be our value of 19. So what we do is we go that p hat, so therefore p hat equals our 19 over our n value is how many people are in the population, which is our 89 people um, and then we should just quickly check on our calculator whether this fraction simplifies and it does not so then for part c we have assuming that the sample proportion is approximately normally distributed what is the probability that the percentage of people with asthma in this sample is less than 10 percent so what we have to do here is we have to find the mean, then the um, variance, and then the standard deviation for this first. So to find our mean, so our mean is our P, which equals our 0 0.21, or it was our 21%, okay? Because we had 21% of people that had asthma. Then our variance, how we work that out is it's P bracket 1 minus P all over N. And this is where our P is our 0 0.21 bracket 1 minus 0 0.21 all over the number of people. And the number of people that we had in this population is 89. So we have 0 0.21 times 0 0.79 all over 89. When we put this into our calculator, what we get is 0 0.00204814814. Um, so we are going to... Not, not the same answer. Hang on, give me two seconds. Oh, that is the wrong answer. Sorry, guys. So when we put that into our calculator, we get 0 0.0018640814. And I'm going to store that to my calculator as A. Then we want to find the um, standard deviation. And how we do that is it's the square root of our variance X. So it will be the square root of 0 0.001864 dot dot dot. So it equals the square root of recall that A and we get 0 0.04317458678. Then what we want to do, now that we know this, is we want to use um, our Z scores, which our Z score formula is Z equals X minus our mean over our standard deviation. Um, for 10%. Okay, so we're using this for 10% or 
or 0 0.1. And this is for x equaling these value, this value of 0 0.1. Just like how x up here equaled um, our 19. So we put this into our z-score. So we'll have z equals 0 0.1 minus our 0 0.21, which was our mean, all over our standard deviation of 0 0.0432. Okay, I'm going to store that number into my calculator as B. The question, um, like this question hasn't asked us to round it all. So that's why I want to use the whole number. So shift store B. So in our calculator, 0 0.1 minus 0 0.21 over 0 0.0432 gets us a z score of negative 2.5462962296 so i'm just going to round this z score to two decimal places myself and then we need to use the probability table for the standard normal distribution, which is in your textbook on page 633. Or what you would have done is, um, the, if this was an exam type question, you would have been given it. But if I just got to continuous probability, where we looked at our normal distribution table, I have my normal distribution table here and I'm looking for a Z of negative 2.55. So I need to go to my negative page and my negative 2.55. So negative 2.5, 0 0.5 is this score here of 0 0.0054. So therefore we have our probability that Z is less than negative 2.55 is equal to 0 0.0054 and this means that 10% of the probability that x is less than 10% is equal to 0 0.0054 okay so the probability that fewer than 10% of the sample of people has asthma is 0 0.0054 Five, four. Now to look at more than 30%, so what we're doing is we're using um, our x to equal 30% or 0 0.3 and we're going to use our z score formula, so x minus the mean over the standard deviation. So z equals 0 0.3 minus that same mean that we calculated in the previous question of 0 0.21 all over our 0 0.0431 oh, 432 was our value but remember that was our b value on our calculator so we're going to use the whole bit when we put this into our calculator so we go 0 0.3 um, minus 0 0.21 all over alpha b we get 2.08455 um which i'm going to round to two decimal places which is 2.08 um, what we then need to do is find the probability that z is less than 2.08 using our normal distribution table which is back here so 2.08 that's on the previous page so 2.0 and then my eight column, I'm just going to draw a line down to find it, line across, is 0 0.9812. So that equals 0 0.9812. So what that would mean is that the probability that x is less than 0 0.3 is equal to 0 0.9812. But if we look back at the question, it said more than 30%. So we therefore want to find probability that x is greater than 0 0.3. So how we do this is we go 1 minus the probability that x is less than 0 0.3. Because remember, probability adds to 1. So it's 1 minus 0 0.9812, which is 0 0.9812. 
which equals 0 0.0100. Eight, eight. So this means that the probability that more than 30% of this sample of people has asthma is 0 